Every story is an underdog story coming from Reykjavik. But it is such a powerful energy to bring, being raised in this nature and being raised within this village. Iceland is cold and Reykjavik is small. Priki is like the mecca of Icelandic rap scene. I think it's really important. I feel rap music has become its own language. We have so many different acts speaking that language now here in Iceland. If you are a talented individual, you will get noticed. It all boils down to being a voice inside a smaller community. And I think we have more artists per capita than any nation in the world. So it's a creative place to grow up. There's a rap culture everywhere. Why wouldn't it make sense here? That summer 2017, when Week of the Week, what would become a hit single, was released. People were still really, really hungry and weren't afraid to like try out new things. All of the talent and the spirit, that seems to be the common thread. We just had so many like hits come out that year that it was kind of ridiculous in hindsight. It was just, you know, kind of a movement. Being in Prikith was like being in, in a movie. It just plays an enormous role to have a place that, you know, embraces the culture and for experimentation as well, you know. Coming up in Reykjavik as a young person, I was always looking for creative outlets in any kind, listening to Swedish hip hop in one ear and uh, Icelandic hip hop in the other. Going through my studies, I was hanging around with a lot of musical artists at the time when I started working at bars. And we come into Tricky, which always was, when I, even when I came into it, a household, well, safe space for rap music artists, graffiti writers, and the, and the elements of hip hop. Young people stepping up, young people breaking ground with their music. It just all happened really fast. Drifting towards 2015, 2016, we could see a surge of energy coming up, but we saw a really real need to be, you know, in place for those artists. And that's when we decided to found Sticky Records as a non-profit uh, record organization, which was just there basically to help artists to step up from 80% to 100% with funding to get them through creative direction. The history is still writing itself, I think, but I mean, we've had artists come up through Sticky which have become, you know, super popular in Iceland. The thought about Sticky was always because we're residing inside a, a house built 18, 1870. It's really small, it's a small venue, it's a small club. It's only so much that we can do, but the thought is much bigger than the place. So we must make something which elevates the place into something else. Alvar is a perfect example of a guy which is at 80% when he comes to us, you know, and we've only worked with Alvar to the extent of helping him with the live shows to this, because he's fully capable of doing everything else. He's amazing and, and, his, and his whole team, I remember still when I met him first and he came, oh, I'm, I'm Alvar. And then this guy pushed him aside and said, I'm his agent. <laughs> and I loved it. We've been in the same school when we were younger. There was this time where we, in, we invited him to the studio. He just wanted to be in the life that we were in, just making music every day. When we found about this place, the first thing we did was to clean. We started deciding where, what room should be where. Downstairs we have the studio, the main studio. I'm rapping there, Robert's mainly making beats and Conrad making beats too. Then we go upstairs, this is like the creative workspace we have in this studio. So Robert can make clothes, Gunnar can make 3D visuals. We have this thing and we build ourselves. The studio feels like we have so much freedom. It's like there's everything here we need. When you're in a group that has so many aspects that you can pick from, like Breaky has an idea and he doesn't know if he can do it if he was alone, but he has these guys around him, like Alvar, me, Gulli, Gunnar, Conrad, everybody. And then that extreme idea seems possible. We make a whole unity. I'm just expressing myself. It's just really raw feelings. That's kind of how I deal with this world. Right now I'm working on exhibition, my debut solo show. Metalwork has also allowed me to embrace my masculine energy. 
And also it's just cool doing something dangerous like that. It gives me kind of like a thrill. I would say that my music and my aesthetic is kind of like I would say that my performances are something that uh, draw people to me. Because I'm half Filipino, I grew up with karaoke, being forced to perform at all family gatherings. What I'm trying to do is just to be seen and heard, and I feel like when I see somebody feeling it with me and we're just in it together, that's what's very important to me. Countess is a perfect example of an Icelandic hip-hop artist which is multidisciplinary in her art. She's a fine artist with, which makes pop music. She's a fine artist which makes rap music. Fine artist which makes punk music. Uh, she's a style icon in her own sense. Maybe it's me being half English, half Icelandic, but the way I see it, what we have here at Prigid and the energy we have here at Prigid is not bound to the place itself. It's bound to the people and the energy they bring. I think the, the future of Sticky will always lie in networking, will always lie in music production, will always lie in venue production and show production. Having New Era coming in and exploring the community, sticking around for the community afterwards is such a great thing. And uh, we're just so excited of, of seeing where that takes us. And uh, it's a shared ideal of what we do. So I really like the point of that. I think it's only going to grow bigger and it's only going to go further. And it's only going to become even wilder, but we don't know what, what the future holds, but we know it's going to be good. It's a very Icelandic mentality. But the rest, everything will be okay.